Let us show you a scene from a play by Howard Lindsay and Russell Krauss. Life that followed. Based on Clarence Day's stories about his own father. Howard Lindsay and Dorothy Stickney play their original roles. Fathers going over the monthly accounts. Billy! Billy! What's the matter, Claire? What's wrong? Sit down, Billy. But, Claire, dear, I really think I'd better... Sit down. I think I... Now, Billy, you know I like to live well and I want my family to live well. But this house must be run on a sound business basis. I must know how much money I'm spending and what for. For example, Last week, I gave you six dollars to buy a new coffee pot. Yes, because you broke the old one. You threw it right on the floor. Now, I'm not talking about that. I'm merely endeavoring... Well, it was so silly of you to break that <coughs> nice coffee pot, Claire. And there was nothing the matter with the coffee that morning. It was made just the same as always. It was not. It was made in a barbaric manner. And besides, I couldn't get another one of those imported ones. That little shop has stopped selling them. They said the... The tariff wouldn't let them. Hmm. And that's your fault, Claire, because you're always voting to raise the tariff. The tariff protects America against cheap foreign labor. And now, I find... The tariff does the nothing but raise the prices, and that is hard on everyone, especially the farmer. I wish to heaven you wouldn't talk about things you don't know a thing about. I do, too, know about them. Miss Gulick says that... Every intelligent woman should have some opinion of her own. Who, oh, may I ask, is Miss Gulick? Why, Claire, dear, you know. She's that um, current events woman I told you about, and the tickets are a dollar every Tuesday. Do you mean to tell me that a pack of idle-minded females pay a dollar apiece to hear another female gabble about the events of the day? Listen to me, if you want to know anything about the events of the day. But you get so excited, <coughs> Claire, dear. And besides... Miss Gulick says that our president, whom you're always belittling, prays to God for guidance. Then I, <coughs> that what night... happened to that six dollars? <laughs> what six dollars? I gave you six dollars to buy a new coffee pot. And now I find you apparently got one at Lewis and Congress and charged it. Here's their bill. One coffee pot, five dollars. So you owe me a dollar. And you can hand it right over. I'll do nothing of the kind. What did you do with that six dollars? Claire, I can't tell you now, dear. Why didn't you ask me at the time? Oh, my Lord. Oh, wait a minute. I spent um, four dollars and a half for that new umbrella that I told you I wanted, and you said I didn't need it, but I did. Very much. Well, now we're getting someplace. One umbrella, four dollars and fifty cents. And that must have been the time I paid Mrs. Tobin for two extra days washing. Mrs. Tobin? Yes, that's two dollars more. Two dollars. That's, um, six dollars and fifty cents. And that's another fifty cents you owe me. I don't owe you anything. <laughs> what you owe me is an explanation of where my money's gone. Now we're going over this account book item by item. I don't know what you expect of me. I tire myself out chasing up and down those stairs all day long, trying to look after your comfort, to bring up your children. I do the mending and the marketing. And as if that isn't enough, you expect me to be an expert bookkeeper, too. No, Vinny. I have no wish to be unreasonable. I don't know what you want to be. But can't you understand? I I'm doing all this for your own good. Oh. Well, I suppose I'll just have to go on paying the bills and hoping I have enough money in the bank to meet them, but it's all very discouraging. I'll... I'll try to do better, Claire. Well, now, that's all I'm asking. Oh, I'll go downstairs and make out the checks and sign them. Uh, not until you give me that dollar and a half. <laughs> dollar and a half? The dollar and a half you owe me. I don't owe you any dollar and a half. I gave you some money to buy a coffee pot for me, and somehow it turned into an umbrella for you. Clarence Day, what kind of a man are you quibbling about a dollar and a half? And what's more... All right, if... all right, all right. Claire, 
Thank you, Claire. Well, now the accounts are all straight again. 